Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, as you join me on this Monday morning, Monday evening, I should say, the 15th of February of 2021, where, as I promised, I am going to uphold and do as much as I could possibly can for the preparation of Lent this year. And one of the big, biggest things I know I can definitely do that was rec recommended to me by the uh, bulletin, which I take every Sunday when I leave Mass, is that I'm going to actually read part of the script, part of the scriptures in the Bible, sort of like a first and a second reading, and they actually have a list of uh, recommended readings from which gospel to do uh, during the week, and I thought I would take them up on that. So uh, allow me to begin. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Genesis. The man had relations with his wife Eve, and she conceived and born Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next she bore his brother Abel. Abel became a keeper of flocks, and Cain a tiller of the soil. In the course of time Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the soil, while Abel, for his part, brought one of the best fistlings of his flock. The Lord looked with favour on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering he did not. Cain greatly resented this and was crestfallen. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so resentful and crestfallen? If you do well, you can hold up your own head, but if not, sin is a demon lurking. At the door his urge is toward you, yet you can be his master. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let us go out into the field. When they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord asked Cain, Where is your brother Abel? He answered, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord then said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the soil. Therefore, you should be banned from the soil that opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. If you till the soil, it shall no longer give you its produce. You shall become a restless wanderer of the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is too great to bear. Since you are now banished me from the soil, and I must avoid your presence and become a restless wanderer of the earth, Anyone may kill me at sight. Not so, said the Lord to him. If anyone kills Cain, Cain shall be avenged sevenfold. So the Lord put a mark on Cain. Let anyone should kill him at sight. Cain then left the Lord's presence and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And from our second reading... Fourteen twenty one. A reading from the from the first book from the book of Luke. They had forgotten to bring bread, and they had only loaf with them in the boat. He enjoyed them. Watch out, guard against the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. They concluded among themselves that it was because they had no bread. When he became aware of this, he said to them. Why do you conclude that it is because you have no bread? Do you not yet understand or comprehend? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and not ears? See and not hear? And do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the five thousand? How many wicker baskets full of garments you picked up? They answered him, Twelve. When I broke the seven loaves for the four thousand... How many full baskets of fragments did you pick up? They answered him, Seven. He said to them, Do you still not understand? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we've concluded, through virtuing through uh, the story of Cain and Abel, Cain and Abel were two brothers who did everything they could in their eyes to please the Lord. Meanwhile, there were other people, especially in the, to the, in the story of Mark, which follows shortly after Jesus' uh, miracle 
of feeding the 5,000 with the loaves and the fishes. Many of these people only sought out to do good by God. They were simply people who tried their very best. But needless to say, through Cain and Abel, Cain saw great malice towards his brother because the Lord had great favour with Abel and he seemed to have been discarded and seemed to have been utterly contempt with uh, cursing Cain as being a dem demon fallen to sin as a result of his crestfallen behaviour. And yet, yet all the same, uh, when the, uh, the, the fishermen were offering, saying that we have not yet enough fragments uh, to feed despite the fact that we've obviously accomplished this, it seemed as if those people simply only responded to logic. They did, not, they did not believe that Jesus really was the Son of God. There were truly people who were looking this earth who, even when they are told or even shown evidence contrary to what they may believe with their own eyes, that they simply would refuse to accept. Because admitting to accept would admit almost an act of, of self-crestfallen feeling that you have denied yourself and that they have denied the Lord. Yet, all the same, what can honestly be understood, especially in the case of Cain and Abel, is that God obviously has no favours. Cain obviously saw issue with this, believing that God was disappointed with Cain because his was insuperior to that of Abel. Abel produced all he could because it was all he was tasked to do. All, he, all God wanted to see out of both Cain and Abel was that if they were really devoted to the Lord God and to repent for the sins that are cast on by Adam and Eve, they would do everything in their power to make sure that God was not disappointed with them. Somehow, when you can honestly understand, there's, there's a great sense of seeing things and believing things, and yet not understanding exactly why, but simply knowing that they exist. One, I think it was the singer Paul Wellis, uh, the one's fam Paul Weller, I should say, famously said, the more I see, the more I know, the less I understand. Now, Paul Weller was a man who his works are very, very influential because they encourage people to think. And that's something that a lot of my favourite movies and indeed lots of favourite music they encourage me to do, including favourite works of literature. They cause, they get people to think they begin to think about the reflection of their own lives. They get them to think about the implications of their own actions. They begin to see now that everybody's uh, conscious effort, unconscious, conscious, whatever the, uh, the dual purposes or conflicts of interest may be, they do things because they do it for a logical purpose. They, they have reasons behind the things that they do. They say that people who have no logic whatsoever in their actions are deemed as crazy and are cursed to walk the earth because there aren't people that don't understand them, but because their concept is so foreign to ours that we, sim we simply fail to understand. However, what can honestly be attributed to the acts of Jesus is that what exactly in the eyes of these fishermen counted as a miracle? What exactly constitutes a miracle that influences others? Many people, out in, as I'd say in our day and age, would dismiss the idea of a miracle as simply being something that would happen to them. And yet they cannot seem to understand that it's for other people. Other people were blessed with this miracle because Jesus saw outright that he was the Son of God. He really was the creator of all things. It Cain's sort of demise in that he was, he can now no longer face God, is that he let God down so much because he failed to acknowledge that it was not through his, it was not through his actions that Lane led Cain down. It was through Cain's own misconduct of the approach. He, you might say, took things in entirely the wrong way. And there are indeed many people around the world right now who take things the wrong way. They do not seem to take criticism with a pinch of salt. Some people are very good at taking things at face value. But the word of the Lord would often encourage people to not look things at face value. They encourage people to think about why they are taking place. There are indeed many times that Jesus has performed miracles through talking down to uh, a tax master and a lot of people did not understand why Jesus would take pity on him. There are indeed many occasions where 
a woman who was convicted of adultery and was set to be stoned and a lot of people took great disinterest and were utterly confused about why Jesus decided to protect her. Jesus was also a man who also laid down and was very much adamant to working with the diseased, the dead, the outcasts of society. But in God's eyes, there is no true outcast of society. Cain was an outcast of society, not because he wanted to be an outcast, but because he failed to understand that it was not through his his ultimate undoing was not through the fact that he displeased God. It's that he himself thought he displeased God. They say, and this is something that always my old English teacher used to say to me, is that her, uh, her Master of Arts uh, thesis essay when she was studying English literature is that to know what sin is means you have already committed it. And when the crow uh, corks uh, three times, we will find out that we have sinned against God. But surely, as is in the case of uh, many, many people throughout the Gospels, is that we simply have to understand why we have gone wrong. What we have done that has made us go astray. And through, uh, the, through our guidance, through calling to the scriptures, as soon as we find out exactly what we have done wrong, then we are able to reevaluate criticism to one that makes us believe that not only can we do good, but we will seek and continue to do good because if we did not make mistakes, we would simply accomplish nothing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.